Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Today we will discuss a question related to aspiration pneumonia for a client uh, who is on tracheostomy. Previous videos we have studied dysphagia and aspiration pneumonia uh, without tracheostomy scenarios. So now we will start with the question. A client with a tracheostomy is alert and oriented and able to tolerate oral intake. Which action would be appropriate to reduce the risk of aspiration pneumonia? So here also the question asks what all are or which is the correct intervention out of the options given for what to reduce the risk of aspiration pneumonia in a client with a tracheostomy and he is alert and oriented able to tolerate the oral intake also first understand how the client he is with the tracheostomy now he is alert he is oriented and he can able to tolerate the oral intake so as for that one the client is okay now what is the intervention that should carry it before starting or initiating the food to reduce the aspiration pneumonia risk of aspiration pneumonia so we'll see the options option one says fully inflate the cuff before feeding option two says have the client sit in an upright position with neck hyperextended option three partially or fully deflate the cuff option four provide a modified diet of pureed foods so we have four options out of this one which is the correct intervention that the nurse should carry it out okay we'll see the we'll see some of the points what are the precautions or what are the interventions that NA should carry it out before initiating the feeding in a client with this scenario a tracheostomy tube with inflated cuff is used in clients who are at a risk for aspiration. So the first point, the inflated cuff is the one we are using for reducing the risk of aspiration for a tracheostomy client. But that clients are unconscious and on mechanical ventilation, which means they are not alert, they are not oriented and they are not ready to start the oral intake. So it is okay for them inflated. But the client, those who are alert, those who are oriented, those can take the oral intake, the inflated cup will be uncomfortable and it will be difficult for swallowing or talk. So what we will do, we will partially or fully deflate the cup to improve or to improve, uh, ensure the comfort as well as reduce the risk of aspiration pneumonia. So, what are the measures we should take care before starting to deflate the cuff? Before the cuff is deflated, the client is asked to cuff if possible. So, that is a point. If possible, ask the client to cuff and to expectorate the sputum or the orange oropharyngeal secretions that is uh, accumulated above the inflated cuff. After that, other, uh, and along with that, we can do the suction also to remove the secretions then only we should deflate the cuff so how before the cuff is deflated ask the client to cuff to expectorate the oropharyngeal secretions that was uh, built up above the inflated cuff so that is the first point then in addition suction is applied through a tracheostomy tube then and then the mouth the cuff is then deflated so two points before deflating a cuff that also we should keep in our mind so what are some of the additional interventions having the client sit upright with the chin flexed slightly towards the chest we see one option in the question that hyper extended that is not correct the client should be in sit upright position until that it is correct but the chin should be slightly flexed towards the chest so now we got one option incorrect option we can remove that one then another additional intervention that is monitoring for a wet or garbled sounding voice so that is also we should assess then monitoring for signs of fever so these are the main points that is related with the tracheostomy client who is alert oriented and oral, uh, able to start take oral intake 
or uh, to reduce the risk of aspiration pneumonia. So we'll come back to the questions. The option one says fully inflate the cuff before feeding. That is not correct. What we studied partially or fully deflate the cuff before initiating the feeding. So our answer here is option three partially or fully deflate the cuff. So option one is incorrect. Now you got the idea. Then option two have the client sit upright position with the neck hyperextended. That is not correct with the neck slightly flexed towards the chest. Then provide a modified diet of period push. That is not um, essential or uh, mandatory. Based on the client uh, swallowing ability after an evaluation, we can uh, decide the food. It is not necessary always should give the period foods. So that is not also a correct intervention. So here our answer is option three. I hope it's clear to you. Please study well and review all the topics. Try to uh, practice more questions so that will help you to pass the exams. I wish you all the best and bye-bye.